Hello everyone, welcome back to Crafts by the Bow. Yesterday on my Facebook Live, um, I made these two little wobble cards, but just as I went live, my daylight bulb broke, and so the pictures was a little bit shadowy. Uh, it was a bit like um, a shadow puppet play. So I promised I would make the card again um, in the daylight so that you could actually see a little bit better what I was doing. And so these are the two that I made last night. And I'm going to make this design again, but I'm just going to change it around a little bit. And instead of being a card that opens to a landscape, I'm going to make it portrait. So we're going to cut exactly the same pieces of paper. We're just going to turn it this way. So I'm, these are the sizings that I used last night, but instead of having the 11 by four and a quarter base, I'm going to do five and a half by eight and a half and score at four and a quarter. And I have got a few bits ready, uh, just because you don't need to sit through me cutting card again, seeing as I cut it yesterday. So I've got the soft sea foam, and I have cut it at five and a half by eight and a half. I've scored it at four and a quarter, and I've also got my designer series paper ready. And I'm still using the free penguin paper that we got from Celebration. You can use any paper you have. I'm going to use the dotty paper, but I'm using the other side. I'm actually going to use a pattern, um, like an image this time. And I'm also using a little piece of the tree paper, which is, it's got um, like the images on the other side, but it's just got the little green trees and it just goes well with the soft sea foam. So that's the one I've chosen. And I'll just take this little bit of glue off. We're going to attach the same size pieces, just the orientation changed. So I've got five and a half by two and three quarters and five and a half by one and a half. And I've just made sure that my orientation is going lengthways as opposed to horizontally like it was last night. So I've got this little piece that I'm going to put on first. And last night when I put the two pieces together, where they butted up to each other, I actually put um, my sentiment on. So let me just show you. So where the two pieces met is where I put this little card, but I'm not going to do that this time. I'm going to put twine on. And uh, so you don't need to have a big sentiment go in, you know, um, portrait style. Okay, so I'm just gonna push that down and then let's find the other little piece. This will cover the entire front. And let me just see, this side is going to be the very edge, so I'm just putting a little bit more glue down that side. And I'm gonna butt it up to this one. Oops, let's just make sure it's straight. I haven't got my bone folder in front of me, so I'm just going to use a stamp block and go over. If you find that there's tiny little overhang, this one has a teeny weeny little piece, you can just trim that off with your uh, little paper snips. Okay. So I'm going to put the twine on next before I start to decorate. And I'm using the white twine out of our Baker's Twine Essentials pack. It comes in lots of colours now, and you get all the colours in the pack. But I just want to use white. Uh, I'm just going to work it out so that it's going to fit down this line. Just like this. And because it's quite a narrow twine, um, I'm actually going to go around a couple of times. And then I can move it along so it fits right over that join. Let's do three and then have an extra little piece here to tie a bow and you, you don't need to anchor it down with adhesive or anything. If you want to you can, you can use like a little glue dot. I'm just going to turn mine round because as you know when I tie bows and things uh, I seem to tie them upside down so it's easier for me to start upside down and then my bow will go the right way. And don't worry about it being in the right place. We'll move it as soon as we've got the bow tied. We can move it along. 
I'm not quite sure how far down the bow will go. So I'm just going to tie it. I know those loops are a bit big. Let's make those a bit smaller. Because I know I don't want them as big as that. Okay, so let's pull this one down as well. There we are. And then we'll move it so that it's over the, the join in the paper. I'm just going to move that one on the back. There we go. And then once we know how big or where the sentiment and the image is going to be, then I'll just move this up or down. So that's our base card already made. I would put a little white piece inside as well and maybe another piece of the paper just to tie the two bits together and even the same paper on the envelope. But let's do our little wobble pieces. I'm going to use the little penguins again, but instead of stamping them, this is the one that I used last night. Instead of stamping them, I'm just going to cut one out from the designer series paper. And I chose this little guy with the green hat and the scarf on. And he is a little bit bigger than my circle, but that's okay. It doesn't matter if he stands off there a little bit. And I'm just gonna cut him out, leaving a tiny little border. You know, you don't have to be too precise. You can't cut this one out with the punch though. It doesn't work to cut these out. It only works for the stamps. But if you've got the stamps and you want to you know, stamp him and cut him out, that would work too. I did actually cut one out um, earlier, but it, it was a little bit big, the one I wanted. I cut the one that was on the pink paper and he was just a little bit bigger than, the, than I needed. And I also played about with punching one. And I'll show you that one in a minute. So, the key to doing this kind of fussy cutting is to use whichever hand you haven't got your scissors in to turn the paper round. Rather than trying to keep this hand still and cut all the way around, it's easier to turn it with your other hand. Okay. So this is the little guy that I cut before when I was just practicing. So he's just this one and I punched him out. I made the little feet with Mango Melody and punched those out. And I did the little um, reindeer horns or the little antlers in early espresso and I fussy cut those out. But actually I'm not going with that piece. So here we are, here's our, our little penguin guy. And I've got a little circle of white card and I'm going to pop him on here. And can you see how he just, just overhangs a little bit, but that's fine for the wobble. But before we stick him on there, what I'd like to do is just a few little snowflakes on the white card that he's going on. Just like I did on these ones last night. But this time I've got balmy blue because that's the blue that's in our designer series paper here. So I thought, you know, a little bit matchy matchy. I don't want to do many of these but I have put a little piece of um, spare paper underneath just so that I haven't got um, you know lots of the same snowflakes I'm just turning it round and turning the card round and you don't need too many you just need a few at the top close that up because we don't need that anymore and I'm going to just Glue this little penguin straight down. Once my glue works, anyway. And we know we here he overhangs a little bit, so I'm not going to uh, put glue right up to the edge. Okay. So there we are. You can just see those couple of snowflakes behind him, and that's just what I needed. All right. Now to make the wobble part. I used these little action wobble springs, which I'm sure I bought from Amazon. And they came in packs of 12. And they're really easy to add. If you don't have these, if you, um, if you don't want to buy from Amazon or they don't have them in, and you don't have another craft shop near you, I do also make my own springs. And I showed how to make them last night. 
So I will quickly show again. I've got this kind of craft beading wire. I don't know what gauge it is, but it, it's really fine. But, you know, you can bend it and it sort of holds a spring if you want it to. It's not terribly strong, but it works for these little wobble springs. I have also used florist's wire. I don't use anything thicker or heavier than a 24 gauge. And sometimes that can be a little bit strong, even for a spring. So all you need with this kind of stuff is just six inches. If I chop that, let me just get my little pliers out again. I put everything away yesterday. So everything's back in its box. Okay. So it's a matter of getting it out again. Okay. And then to make the spring, you just need something like um, last night I used a Stampin' Right marker. You could use a pencil. I'm going to use the little eyelet piece out of my um, this little tool set that I have that my pliers were in. So it's, it's just to hand, so I'm just going to use this. And all you need to do is just to wind it round. You don't need to do it tight, you just need to wind it round and then take it off. And you've got you know, like a little bed spring, little coiled spring. And the next thing you need are just two little pieces of card. And I've got one here, let me just find a little piece of scrap. There we go. So. I'm just using this little old punch, which is three quarters of an inch. But you can make the springs a little bit bigger. Don't make them any smaller than this, because then if they're too small, you haven't got much of an area to attach them with. So, you know, three quarters of an inch, an inch, all of that would work. And then I've got my tear and tape. And you just tear yourself a piece off. And then with one end of the spring, you just place it onto one of the pieces, one of the little circles, and stick it down with the tear and tape. Okay, you're not going to take this back in off, so you could use scotch tape, um, or even uh, like a painter's tape. It's just to hold that spring down. Then you need another little piece, turn it around, and you do exactly the same. It's a little bit more difficult to show you because I've got the top on here. So you just hold it down, find your little piece of tape and stick it over. And that creates just the same kind of wobble spring. So it probably isn't quite as sturdy as the pre-made ones that have a plastic piece here. But, you know, that works perfectly. Okay, so this one that I got in the pre-made pack, you use the harder plastic surface to go onto your wobble part. And this piece, when you take the backing off, is like a clear acetate. And that's the piece that I always stick onto the card. So I'm just going to take this off. And let's see, let's put our penguin the right way around. And you just hold it and squish it down. Push it down with your fingers or a bone folder, just so that it's really adhered strongly onto there. And then my backing, I've got a little piece of shaded spruce and one of my wonderful snowflakes again. That's what they're called. They are wonderful, but that is what they're called. They're called wonderful snowflakes. And let me see. Whoopsie. I'm just going to put some stamping seal down for this, just to hold the snowflake down. And there's two sides to the snowflake. One is like a flat white backing and the other side is a pearlescent kind of sheen. And I'm just gonna put the pearlescent sheen looking up at me, stick that down and then this piece is going to go onto our card like this. And this time, because it's over twine, it would be a bit more difficult to keep adhered. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put little um, dimensionals under. But if you wanted, you, you could certainly just do that with um, like a, a tear and tape or a liquid glue. 
the, the only problem is that it would look a little bit bent because it's going over the top here. Um, but actually, I don't think it would matter too much because you maybe wouldn't see that it was um, over the edge there because you've got the, the little wobble spring on. So let's just stick it down anyway. We don't need to worry. I know it's going to go about here, which means that my bow is in about the right place. I might just move it up just a tiny bit, just bend the card and pull all the strings along. And it will just move up just a tiny piece. There we go. And as long as these bottom ones are flat, I'm not going to worry too much about them. Just move this one over. There we go. Oops. Make sure all three of these are flat. Okay. And then let's pop this on. And just make sure that where the little snowflake overhangs, it's not overhanging over the edge of your card. three along. Oh, I've got it bent again. Just let me. I'm just going to bend the card a little bit. I've just bent it. I've just bent the string. That's all. I've got it overlapping in the wrong place. There we go. Now it's flat. Okay. I'll just hold that down for a second. And because it's over that twine, it'll just take an extra second or two to adhere. There we go. Okay. So now the little wobble spring has this little backing on. And when you peel this off, can you see how it's a clear, um, sort of like a thin acetate, but it's adhesive. So just make sure that you get your little piece centered. And once it's on, you, you can see it if you really look, but anybody else just looking at your card, they're not going to see that clear piece there. And that will just make him, just make him wobble. Now for a little sentiment, I've already stamped a sentiment from here, from the Penguin Place, and I did this one, the Be Cool, Be Chill, Be Merry. And all I'm going to do is, I've stamped it twice, and I'm going to just cut out the little pieces. And really, you know, it's really easy just to cut round. You could do this on your trimmer, but for me, it would probably take me longer to line it up on my trimmer than it would just to cut it. Oops. You don't have to be too accurate. My little pieces are going all over, but that's okay. So I'm just making the sentiment into the three single word little phrases. And then I'm going to attach them to my card and I've got, I've got some of my foam adhesive strips. This is a new pack. I tend to only use these if I'm making proper shaker cards. I don't, I don't use them on much else. Uh, but they're just long thin strips which are perfect for shaker cards I'm just wondering they look about the right kind of width for on here as well so I'm just going to cut a little bit off if you didn't have these you could use what I normally use for these kind of things and it's just the little edges from the dimensionals um, and you can trim those down or you could even cut a dimensional in half and stick that on. Okay, so I'm just going to cut it just short of the sentiment so that you can't see it. So there's one. Let's put a little piece on the back of here. And 
again. I'm just going to bend it back so that it doesn't go all the way to the edge of the sentiment. Let's find this one. So I do apologise about the, um, the quality of the video from yesterday. My op light was working just fine and then as, as I turned it on again, as the Facebook Live started, then the bulb just blew. So, and I had no time to go downstairs and get a new one. So I just carried on with the Facebook Live, but it was a little bit dark. Okay, now I'm just gonna sort this little bow out. You could certainly use a ribbon here. Um, if you wanted, instead of doing this, you could put a little piece of like a coordinating cardstock between the two so that you didn't see where the join was as well. And lots of different little options. Okay. Okay. And then I'm going to I'm going to put the Be Merry on top of the little penguin here. These wobble cards, they will go through the mail. Um, if you have them squashed down in your envelope, but I found that sometimes um, like If they're going through For us, it's through Canada Post Sometimes the envelope will push right into this and the franking machine just catches them So I tend to use these for cards that I give by hand or I will fold them over this way So that there's no little piece to catch in the mailing process um, let's see where we're going to pop these. Take that back in off. I think I'm just going to pop them around. So, like, be cool. Put that back in. There we go. Be chill. And we'll put the little be merry on top of the penguin. As though he's just holding it. There we go. Okay. So there's our little wobble card in a much better light than last night. And I hope that today you could see it. This is one of the others that we made. And all I did was I used the 3D embossing folder, which is like the little um, fir trees, the little spruce trees. And I cut one of the images out from the design series paper and I backed it onto our basic white cardstock and then it's just exactly the same. I didn't put it on a little circle because the polar bear was big enough for me just to attach the wobble to. So there was this one and then this was like the one I've just made now except the orientation is different. So, so thank you for bearing with me yesterday while while I was trying to work in the dark and I hope that you'll have a go at that I hope that you enjoy that um, that little design and it is so versatile I've made these for birthday cards um, not only for children I think grown-ups like doing this too so you know it, it is versatile little one and you just choose whichever way around you want your card to go Thanks so much for watching everybody and I'll see you all again really soon. Take care. Bye bye.